hitting pause on World Street coverage to share an update with y'all. Hey everyone, Julie Golub here. Happy November! It is Gratitude Month, and though this is not my typical video, I have much to be thankful for, and I wanted to give you an update on our rare disease story. For timing's sake, I'm posting this somewhere in the middle of my World Shoot series coverage, and I hope you'll watch it through to the end. So, back in February, March timeframe, I shared a couple of videos here on YouTube about my 12 year old daughter's diagnosis with juvenile dermatomyositis, a form of juvenile myositis. <laughs> it's a mouthful, and it's also a very rare autoimmune disease that often presents with skin conditions, but under the skin, that's where it gets serious. The immune system becomes hyperactive and begins attacking the muscles. Definitely not good. Uh, I'll link both videos below, but the Reader's Digest version is that our daughter was diagnosed in August of 2019, and we've been on a path <laughs> of aggressive treatments with steroids, infusions of immunoglobulin, and weekly injections of a chemotherapy drug, along with other pills, <laughs> lots of them. <laughs> Those first few months, especially when we experienced a flare-up in her disease, were, for us as parents, were terrifying. After the initial shock and the waves that came after it, we moved forward as a family and we have tackled this disease with intensity, gusto, fervor, all of the above. I am so proud not only of our daughter, but of our whole family throughout all of this. We went gluten-free and reduced dairy and sugar, basically anything in the diet known to cause inflammation. The sun is also a trigger, and we've gone through more sunscreen than ever before. <laughs> Munchkin has a collection of UV clothing, umbrellas, and some pretty schnazzy hats too. There have been a lot of lemons, and with it, lemonade. The work has paid off, and I have good news. We've been able to reduce the frequency of her infusions, and the amount of steroids that she's taking. It is a very slow process, but I am over the moon grateful. It's been a challenging year for everyone, but it has been downright scary for kids like our daughter who are immunocompromised. Simply put, COVID-19 increased the vulnerability of children who receive treatments that suppress their immune system. During the pandemic, yeah, our trips to the hospital for infusions are even more stressful than they have ever been. We've been living the hashtag quarantine life <laughs> for so many months now. <laughs> As a family, we've made one trip to Michael's for crafts. We had a fun outing to visit a dog breeder in Kansas, and we dropped a gift off at our friends who have a goat farm. My youngest daughter had one, two play dates with her best friend over the summer, and we're full-time homeschooling now. This mama is learning a lot. <laughs> we did not go trick-or-treating and won't be visiting family for the holidays, sadly, either. But we're doing our best to make up for it by having fun and making memories the best we can. I'll drop in a video of the girls' Halloween costumes that we tied into a homeschool history lesson. If you're a fan of the band Sabaton, you have to check out the Instagram reel. I'll leave it linked. It was, it's just so much fun. <laughs> I believe I can literally count on one or two hands the times my children have been out, and when they have, it's been with extreme caution. Uh, FaceTime and Zoom don't make up for face-to-face -face interactions, but during a pandemic, it's what we have to do. Uh, let's see what else. We have a crazy procedure set up for washing groceries, quarantining mail, and library books, as well as a clothes designated dump right at the door that our children know to avoid. My husband who works outside our home takes incredible precautions in order to reduce risk as well. Some may think that's crazy or overboard, but our doctor doesn't, and we are doing our best, our very, very best for the health and safety of our children. As we've all adjusted to quarantine throughout spring, 
summer and now fall, <laughs> I have to say thank you so much to everyone who has been respectful of where we are in all of this. Masks, even cute ones, are not fun to wear, period. Nope, not at all. <laughs> that said, they can and do help prevent the spread of not only this disease, but even something like the common cold by acting as a barrier for coughs and sneezes. It's simple. And yes, just a cold can cause a JM child to have a flare, and that's a huge, huge setback in their care. So to everyone who does wear a mask when they're out and about and stays home when they're sick, thank you. To everyone who has sent messages of kindness, Thank you. To everyone who has offered to help, thank you. To all my sponsors who supported me during this year, thank you. Juvenile myositis diseases are orphan diseases. They just don't get the attention and love from the medical world or drug companies. This means that we, as families who struggle with these diseases, have to drive research and awareness forward. And so I have to thank Cure JM. It's a top-rated charity that not only helps find a cure, but also supports families who have to deal with this disease as well. They send me messages on social media with support whenever I share infusion days. They frequently connect and offer help and guidance. They even offer webinars on the latest treatments and developments, as well as success stories that really, truly help families. They drive progress, and here's how. And this is from Cure JM. Cure JM's achievements are results of partnerships with the world's foremost research organizations, such as the National Institutes of Health, Duke Children's Hospital, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, and with private sector biotech companies, such as Riverigen and Corpus Pharmaceuticals. We are excited to share that Riverigen is working to bring a new steroid one without side effects to market in 2021, and Corpus is in clinical trials for a new drug that reduces inflammation and improves skin conditions without suppressing the immune system. The current treatments used by the best doctors are, to be honest, hard on the body. We're talking massive amounts of steroids and other medications with not only rough side effects, but ones that can cause issues with bone density, vision, and more. We have no idea if these new medications will work for our munchkin, but they are major steps in the right direction. It means a lot to us as a family to know that progress is being made for JAM. I do have a GoFundMe page set up where you can check out my Aim to Cure JAM challenge or make a contribution. So far, we've raised over $5,000 of my $10,000 goal this year for this charity, and I love your help. And this is truly awesome. Through the kindness of the Coffee family, all contributions made through Giving Tuesday will be matched. I know there are so many wonderful charities to contribute to, especially this time of year. That said, every little bit helps, and our family will also be making a contribution to Cure Jam as well. Times are tough, and if you can't contribute monetarily, please consider sharing this video or the charity page to help us spread the word. We'd be grateful for it. I'll leave a link on the screen and below, but you can also send checks made out to Cure Jam and mailed to Cure Jam. P.O. Box 45768, Baltimore, Maryland, 21297, and use Coffee Family Match comma Golub in the memo. Thank you so much once again. Y'all are just the best.